All right. Mystery sword unboxing time. Or is it? So, look. We all know it's Polly in here. And no yellow tape. Imagine that. But it is taped up all the way around. So, that's a good thing. So, before I open this box, let's take a little step back in time. This guy right here. This is the least sword. If you haven't seen that video, go back and look at it. Is it a perfect sword? No, not at all. Um, the Fuchi moves up and down right here. So that has to be shimmed. The Ito has been holding up really well. I cut a lot with this thing. It's got real ray skin. Kostra's never come loose. The other thing I don't like is the really glossy black Suba and stuff. It makes it look toyish looking. But other than that, this thing is a hell of a cutter. I was surprised how well this thing cut and how well of an edge was on it. And I only stropped it. So, with that being said, I like to try and get, when I find a new company, more than just one sword from them if I can. At least two. Kind of tells you then what their quality control is like. So, like I said, if you haven't seen the review on this one, go back and um, maybe I'll find a link to to the video so you can see it. So, we have another Lee sword. This one caught my eye. And I decided to get it and see what their quality is like. Now this will make, um, hi Harley, Samurai Bird kind of happy. They have L6 blades too. So I do not know if they do custom work. Can't tell you that because I haven't asked. But they do have L6 blades. They're really nice looking. They have a Shobu Zakuri that's like $850. Now, it's a nice looking Shobu, don't get me wrong. Um, it is a folded blade. This thing's taped really good. With premium silk and all that so now am I gonna get that one no nah, it's like $850 but they do have like I said L6s too so if you're in the market for L6 I mean I don't know what type of quality they are because I've never gotten one from them the sword I just showed you is a T10 blade so, let's see if this will open up. Nope, not quite yet. This thing is taped good. And they overnighted this from Missouri. So, not bad. Because I was wondering when they were going to ship it. Okay, so there we go. Just simple little bag. I've actually got one of these. So there we go. Yeah, right. Let's see if I can't get this thing. They got wrapped pretty good, so. All right. Let's get this out of our way. Let's get the plastic off the handle before we look at the whole thing. That came off really easy. I hate it when they're a pain. 
So, so far, doesn't look too bad. The Saya is painted really nice. It's got that blue silver with black. That looks really nice. And this has the battle wrap. There's the Manukis. And they don't move. Kind of have a little pointiness to them, but they don't seem to dig into the hands. So it is real ray skin. And the ray skin has been dyed blue. So that's nice. It's got a nice color scheme. It really does. Now, on the site, it says it's Arn Suba. It looks matte. Yeah, it is. It's a matte finish. So there's the Arn Suba. It's not very big. Subas don't have to be majorly huge, neither. But there is no hot spots on it. So that's nice. And then the Fuchi and the Kasha are just alloy. This supposed to, it says it has premium silk wrap. So you just have to, I mean, if it is, it is. It's not a full wrap, it's just panels. It's got the Makugi pegs. They're kind of covered though, almost on both sides. You can see them. So that would make it kind of hard to take the handle off. It has a nice distal taper too on the handle. So it's wide here and it thins out right there. So it's more like a 10 inch handle. So if I go to elbow to there, it's almost right. 11's like perfect for me. But I could do like 10 and a half, and that's what this is a 10 and a half handle. So I'm not even going to check the shitted domes. We all know they never glue those babies in. They always, yeah, they just set in there. They always do that. I have one sword that where they actually glued it in, and it was like $60 for it because it's $10.45. <laughs> Imagine that. And the, the Segeo is just the Ido wrap, which is fine. That's all it is. People always go, shoestring, it's just the wrap. That's all it is. If he has a cotton wrap, they put the cotton one on there. So, All right. So enough with that. And this is kind of neat. The silver is painted kind of like clouds or waves or something. And it's like a splash coloring of the blue. It's really nice. I um, wish I had my light hooked up to my camera, but I don't because it just doesn't do any justice. So let's check out the blade. And I noticed the handle kind of has a curve to it too. It's not that straightness, which is kind of nice. It's very rare that you see that the handle goes with the blade. Normally it's on a Tachi. Okay, let me, uh, <laughs> I remembered everything this time. Let's clean this up first. It's got a decent amount of oil on it. It's not like lathered with it. So, so far everything's looking really nice here. We have doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, Una Bukai Zakuri. Now you notice there's no Hamon line 
on this. Okay, and there's a reason for that. The reason this does not have a Hamon is because this is a 9260 spring steel blade. Okay, 9260 you cannot differentially harden. Anything really that's kind of 9260 or like Hanways that they like to use, not tempered because if you try to do that with spring steel, it's designed to flex on purpose. Hence the name spring steel, so it springs back. If you temper it, differentially temper it, you change the molecular structure of the metal. People tried to do it when they started using 9260 spring steel and they would chip, they would crack, they would break. So finally you learn the lesson and don't do that no more. <coughs> so that's why you cannot get a blade in spring steel that uh, temp differentially tempered. It's through, always through hardened. Doesn't feel too bad on the shaping of it. It's got a little bit of a ripple in it. From the forging. Nothing bad though. They could have done a little bit better on it. Smoothing that the forging marks out. Because I can see them in the light. So which is not a real big deal breaker. It's not gonna affect the performance of the blade at all. It's just that you have taken a little bit more time with that. It does have though a nice diamond reinforcement where the Kasaki would be. So that's nice. It's got some nice movement to it. Feels like you can control it in your hands. Has a little, little front heaviness, but nothing that would be unruly. So, point of balance, somewhere in here. So it's about four, a little bit over four inches, which is where it should be. The color scheme on this is nice though. And the Hibaki's fitted really, actually really pretty, really nice. There's just on this side, one tiny little gap. So them fitting the blade to this, they actually did a really, really good job. And I can, tell that this is an iron suba for sure and it's just been pantina black so you can totally tell like I said the light in here sucks <clears throat> so let's see here let's see how sharp it is We'll use a bug K catwalk. It's got knives in it. Why not? That was pretty damn good. Mind you, you also saw me take it out of the box. This thing is scary. Gary Sharp. I'm going to touch that edge. Not even, look at that. Not even going to touch that edge. Don't need to. Don't need to. So, what is the price point on this? Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. 
Absolutely not. But real ray skin, real Arn Suba, 9260 spring steel blade. So it, it will, it's a forgiving blade. So if you have a bad cut, it's going to spring back and not put a set or a bend in your blade, which is nice. Real ray skin, and like I say, I got to take it with what they say premium silk wrap. Doesn't mean it's Japanese silk. It could be Chinese silk. It doesn't specify. So for this right here is 155. So that is not a bad deal for a blade that will be forgiving, especially if it's your first one, if you screw up. So definitely gonna have to play around with this thing and see how it does. Now the first big bohe, it's nice, there's no ripples in it, no nothing. They did a good job on that. It's just back here, there's a little bit of ripple in it from them forging it, thinning it out on the back side. So, but like I said, this thing right here, this guy, T10 blade is a heck of a cutter. It really is. I mean, I have sharpened this one because like I said, I cut a lot with it. And it's pretty darn simple. And the Suba is about the same size as the Unibukai. So. But it does feel comfortable in the hands. You can really index in it. I thought at first these would dig into your hands, but they don't. They don't dig in at all. Because they kind of, I don't know if you'll see it, it kind of sticks up right there. So, but there's no rough edge. Definitely going to have fun with this one. Definitely. And definitely gonna have to go outside and do some cutting with this and see how it performs. So if anybody's looking for a well-budgeted sword or you're on a fixed budget, you want something that's not going to fail on you or kill you, check out Lee's swords, they're on Amazon. They're kind of one of those, I would say, hidden gems on Amazon. Um, got another company I need to, I'm gonna, uh, eventually going to get a sword from. They've actually been around for a long time. Um, I would say they started back from what I found 2012, late, earliest 2014. And they've been around for a long time. And they might be one of those hidden gems. I don't know. But, I mean, it's not bad at all. Everything is tight on this thing, too. Everything stayed tight on the other sword. So, yeah, if you're looking for something or an L6, they've got L6s. Now those are a lot more money. Like I said, their Shobu, which has all premium stuff on it, is like $850 for it. So, but it's nice looking. It really is. And it's a folded blade. Or what people would call Damascus. And it doesn't fall out. Locks right in. In fact, I have yet to have to shim the other one. I got from them and it locks right in so that's good but it doesn't take much to pop it out so that's good and I definitely love that color scheme it really works even the blue um, Samigawa works really good with the Saya so 
and I love how it goes with it because you can see that right there it just flows with the blade which you don't see very often which kind of helps with the cutting performance whereas if you look at this one it, it kind of does it kind of doesn't you know but this thing cuts like a beast and I've hit my stand with this and it's done nothing to it so that's my review guys on the Lee Sword Unibukai 9260 spring steel never owned a spring steel blade so this is my first one and I always wanted to try and see how they perform so now I get to and just might have a cutting video right after this so stick around <laughs> 